Hey friends, today we're checking out a four season greenhouse in the high mountains of Colorado. Jesse's been growing tropical fruits for over 20 years. He's got coffee, bananas, avocados. He's gonna give us a tour of how he grows everything, how he heats his main house, just with this greenhouse back here, and how easy they are to build. Let's go. We just went away for a week and the bananas sort of got fried, but some years we get a couple bunches of bananas and that's sort of cool. Everything got sort of fried while we were gone, I see. I haven't really been in here. These are figs. Boy, it must have just got dry in here or something. Anyway, usually they're really green <laughs> and verdant looking. These are uh, basils. And these are olive trees. Have you gotten olives off of them? Haven't gotten olives yet. They say it takes 10 years, like in Italy or Greece, before you get olives off an olive tree, and it's been about 12. Oh, okay. And we haven't gotten any yet. This is a pineapple plant. I think there's a couple with pineapples on them. And pineapples, they just keep regrowing, right? You just leave them there? You take a pineapple and you cut the head off it, you know, and plant that, and then it grows into one of these. There's some lettuce and some tomatoes. We can get cherry tomatoes year round. Coffee? These are coffee plants. I don't know. I, I might take them out, but I have a hard time taking something out once I put it in. Let's see, avocado tree, another olive tree. These are chards, Swiss chard that are about 20 years old. They just don't die. Tomatoes don't either. That's how big yeah, their trunk gets after a while. So you just pluck chards and it keeps growing? Yeah. And we've picked the coffee beans and I made coffee one time, but it was a lot of trouble. It wasn't worth the squeeze. If you really needed some coffee, it would be. And these are all different kinds of citrus trees, but they, they sort of blend together and they all make these oranges that are about the size of a lime, and they taste like a lime. They're like an orange lime. They call them sour oranges in Mexico. They're hard to see, but there's a little lime that I see right there. Until they get bigger and turn colors, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, we got a lot of them. We get about five bushels of citrus fruit every year. Just even this little section right here. Yeah. You could grow a lot of food out here, but we don't really need it. We get it in the garden. I think everybody that lives in Colorado and Utah and New Mexico should have a solar greenhouse. They work so well. You could grow most of your food right in here and you don't have a heating bill. I'll tell you where it really saves you some money. If you walk out here in January and, and you're around all this green stuff every day, you don't feel like you have to fly to Mexico. <laughs> During my brief summer visit to the homestead, Jesse kept mentioning how remarkable the transformation in the winter was. I wanted to see personally what his greenhouse looked like in the middle of winter. So just to give us a second tour, just to see how his greenhouse was doing. It was quite remarkable. Okay, it's 44 degrees out. It's a really warm January day here. But in the greenhouse, I just looked 117. Imagine they get this in Arizona and sat outside. Uh, I pruned everything back a lot recently, but you can see some oranges and Limes up there. I really like sorrel a lot. It makes the best pesto, in, in my opinion. We got some lettuce here for salads. That's an avocado tree, just heavily pruned. I prune the coffee bushes back really, really big time because they were blocking those, those collectors. That's a chard, a Swiss chard. It's about 12 years old, so they get long stems. And the collectors I found laying around and I have them hooked up, and when the sun's out like this, it hits a solar panel out there and runs a little motor and runs the water. It goes through these collectors and then through our floor, and it gives us three or four degrees. Inside the house? Inside the house, which is, yeah, that's not nothing. We've been getting some garden tomatoes, some fresh tomatoes. This one's starting to turn red a little bit. We've got a red one inside, and that's not bad for January 2nd. In the middle of Colorado? Yeah. You can see the mountains up ahead. Oh, there's a little pineapple. I guess that's the only one that's growing right now. There's some figs up there. They're sort of hard to get to. So all these barrels are full of water and, and we use them to water these things during the winter. The barrels go all the way down the greenhouse and they last about all year. And then this gravel on the floor is about five inches thick and it's over styrofoam. Like twice in 20 years, I've put out electric heaters because I didn't want it to freeze everything. And some things are a lot more susceptible to freezing, like the bananas. If it gets to like mid-30s, the leaves start to turn yellow and die. And so 
it heats up during the day in here. It's like 117 now and it cools down to like the 40s at night and during the day we open the windows and doors to the house just this greenhouse heats the whole house if you have like four or five hours of sun that that'll do you another thing that's crucial in a passive solar house is you have to have window shades you lose 90 percent of your heat through the windows so even if the walls are super insulated it doesn't do you any good so the first year we were here we didn't have them the first winter it was really cold then we built the greenhouse and got shades for the windows just those, just to stop the heat from radiating right out. This house is 3,400 square feet. Every year but one, I've only burned a cord of wood, and that's all. So that's like a fire every five days or something. It works really good. And is it pretty expensive to build something like this? No, I don't think so. I think all this glazing is quadruple wall polycarbonate, and all the glazing was... 5,000 bucks and a little framing lumber and painting them and not counting my labor I probably got the most 10,000 in it and it's heated our house for 20 years so you got your return yeah, yeah just on that these are all the blackberries we get a year's supply of blackberries and Beyond there's raspberries, they're pretty much done. These are uh, goji berries. I'm not a big fan of goji. Me neither. And then you got a ton of golden delicious. These were here. These I just didn't take down. All that land out there where the pasture is and the grapes and those different kinds of fruit trees. Yeah. That was all huge red delicious trees. Oh wow. And a red delicious, if you have the best year ever, and they were all clean, you still wouldn't make any money because nobody wants, wants them anymore. Them. Yeah. There's just so, ma so many better apples now. Really dark. Boy, that's that old apple taste. So overall, how many acres are we at? Uh, 40. So it's just sort of a big variety. I mean, I'm not trying to make a living farming. I'm 75, you know. <laughs> I'm just having fun. And how did you get into this? Well, I always wanted to be a farmer because my uncles and my grandfather were farmers. And I told my mom when I was in high school, I want to be a farmer. And she said, well, you're not going to inherit a farm. Everything costs so much money, the tractors and the land and everything. I saw that. So I worked until I was uh, 51 and I realized I could retire and buy a farm. I said, well, I'm going to stop and look in Paonia. That's where all the cherries used to come from. And I walked into a real estate place and this lady took me around and she uh, showed me about 12 places of what I told her my budget was. Didn't like any of them. And then she said, well, there's this other place. It's three times your budget. Are you interested in looking? I said, yeah. And I came and looked and I saw it was like perfect. It had the river ran through it. It had a spring up on the hill that I could get gravity water from. And it was, it was perfect. It was next to the soccer fields. The guy was a great guy that owned the farm. I told him, you know, I could buy this, but I couldn't get the money for it a year I have to sell everything and he said okay i'll wait for you and shook my hand he said and i'll help you for a year because i didn't know i didn't know how to do anything he was just the greatest guy and he did and he helped me for a year and and that was 20 years ago did you build this house yeah that's what i did to make a living was i would design and build houses so i knew what i wanted to build passive solar house you want to design it so you have as many windows as you can on the south side and as few as possible on the north so this is facing directly south and the greenhouse is facing south. There's very few windows on the north side. And then you want it to be insulated well, of course, and you want to have as much mass as you can inside the house. Some of these interior walls are concrete walls and the slab is, of course, concrete and it's got styrofoam below it. So it warms up and holds the heat. That rock wall is about eight inches thick over there. So there's a lot of mass in here. And the greenhouse is attached to the house directly. All right, where are we at? There's the garden. You got strawberries and tomatillos and tomatoes and peppers. Do you want to dig up a sweet potato? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know you could grow sweet potatoes in Colorado. I just tried them one year and they did fabulous. I'll start at the end here. Wow, those are huge. Look, I broke that one in half, darn it. Oh man, look how big that is. 
they spread out. You gotta be really careful digging them. And what do you do for your soil? When we make wine, there's a whole lot of uh, grape seeds and skins. There's some more down there. And uh, I put it in with the chickens and they mix it all around. And then I put leaves on top of that and maybe hay about a foot high. And the chickens mix it and poop in it and everything. And then that's my compost and I just put it back in. Every year we flood this. So there are rows where the water runs down. We had a huge eggplant crop this year and they're still flowering. Ton of peppers. Are they sweet, spicy? These ones here are hot, these skinny ones. And those are bell peppers down there. I like these, I put in my eggs every morning, these, these red ones. She just picked them all so you don't see much red, but they will all turn red. And then you have some birds and chickens? Yeah, we have one goose and a bunch of chickens for the eggs. The goose sat on some chicken eggs this year and got them to hatch. She may be getting older, but she used to lay like 22 eggs a year, all in the spring. We, did, we got that from somebody that had a bunch of little baby geese. And we had a male too, but he was just too obnoxious. And these solar panels, are they used for? These are photovoltaic cells. And for the house. Yeah, and there's more up there. And then in the house, there's uh, some batteries. And they just are kept topped off. But if the power goes out, they come on and take over before you would even know. Like if you're listening to a song on the radio, you would never know that the power went out. I wanted backup in case the power went out. I'm not saying I think it would happen, but I think it would be relatively easy for somebody to knock out the power in the United States. So we're moving in here when the zombies come? This would be a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> There's the batteries. So if the power ever goes out in the house, those come on instantly and run everything but the 220. And what's 220 is, is uh, the hot water heaters and the electric stove. I call this the barn. This is a cooler that I made because I read about a thing on the internet called the CoolBot. And it's just this little thing about this big, but it costs about 600 bucks. And you get a regular window unit air conditioner and you follow the instructions and redo the wiring on the window unit so it'll cool down to like 32 or three degrees. And it's got four inches of styrofoam. You could hang meat in here. That's what that's for. Fruit keeps a long time in here. So this is our cooler. I keep it in here for maybe three or four months, not year round. Honeycrisp over there. There's styrofoam below the floor. And there's like a two inch styrofoam on the inside and then another two inch on the outside and then fiberglass insulation and the stud walls. So it's, it's pretty sealed. This is the cool butt. This thing. And that's just a Westinghouse window unit. It works well. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like these types of videos. It really helps our channel grow. And we'll see you on the next one.